Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be talking about my experience at UC Riverside being pregnant and then being a mom. Um, I feel like it's the perfect timing because I already filmed that video where I, how I saved money. So I was like, you know what? I think it's like perfect timing because I need to film this next video. So if you guys wanna know how that experience was for me, please keep on watching. All right guys, so if you didn't already know, I have a three-year-old. I know that I don't share my daughter or my boyfriend. Um, but it's because I'm a very private person and I feel like my private life is my private life and it's my happy life. So I don't need to share it to the world. Um, but my freshman year in college, I got pregnant and I don't know, it just it literally was life changing to say the least. But it was the best experience. I never regret having my daughter or getting pregnant, although she was not planned. Let me tell you that um, she has taught me a lot. And I don't know, it's just, I was like, I always get that like question how I did it. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just film a video. So like I was saying, I got pregnant my, for, yeah, I got pregnant my freshman year and I got pregnant. No, I found out, I'm sorry that I was pregnant when I went on winter break. So when, I, if you guys know, I lived on campus or if you guys recall from that video, I lived on campus. So I came back during winter break and then one day I kind of just like thought about my period and I was like, hey, I don't remember getting my period this month. So me and my boyfriend went to the store and bought pregnancy tests and then, you know, I took it and sure enough, I was pregnant. Um, but to be 100% sure, I went to a clinic and I checked and then they were like, yeah, you're pregnant. And I actually found out that I was two months pregnant. So I was like shook out of my mind. I was like, holy fuck, I'm two months pregnant. And the lady was like, yeah, did you, when was your last period? Did you not know this? And I was like, no, like I didn't even consider my period. I feel like I was just so caught up living my best life that I didn't think about it. And it's funny because me and my boyfriend were always like, I remember at my school, we would get free condoms. And like one day I was like, let's just try the free, the you know, the condom, the ones that they give here. Like there was vending machines for condoms and stuff. And he was like, no, like I'd rather buy them. And I was like, no, let's just try it. I feel like I got pregnant that time, like that freaking condom. And my, my boyfriend swears that it was that time. And he's like, no, it's those damn cheap condoms at your fucking school. And so that's, I, I do agree, kind of would make sense, but whatever, I was two months pregnant. Um, I chose to go and stay in school because I was like, what do I gain from being pregnant and just quitting? Like, why would I do that? So when I went back during winter quarter to school, I asked if I if I could still live on campus, if, even if I was pregnant. And my RA, the RA is the person who's in charge of your hall. And she was like, yeah, like we can't kick you out. So I was like, perfect, like I don't plan on leaving. And she was like, you know, well, I, if you need anything, like let us know. Um, she's like, but no, we can't kick you out. So that worked out for me um, and I saw it as a good thing because I did start having like those pregnancy symptoms where I was always tired, I would always be sleeping, I would get like hungry at random times and living in the dorms you have food right below you like if you go to the first floor there's like a store and you would get bear bucks which is money to go buy food. Um, and then aside from that, I would get the meals there. So it was perfect for me. I was living my best life. I feel like I was like a little teddy bear and just, just would basically hibernate all the time. Just come out to eat and then go back. But it wasn't bad my first year. The only thing was once I started showing, which was towards my spring quarter, which is the last quarter before we go on summer, um, that's when I feel like I started getting the stares and kind of like, people in some of my classes staring at me like you're pregnant you know and I didn't like that I feel like it made me feel uncomfortable and at times it did make me feel like I didn't want to be there like I wanted to leave but at the same time I was like you know what a stare is just a stare and it's not gonna hurt me and although I did feel uncomfortable I was like I made a mistake like I had to own up the fact that there's consequences to your actions and I was like I can't you know sit here and cry about something that like i opened my fucking legs what did i fucking expect you know that's at least what i told myself i am sorry to be so fucking blunt but that's basically how it was and i was like i can't sit here and cry about it like this is the consequence of you know my actions 
So it was very uncomfortable to be honest, but I kind of just decided that it is what it is. I'm about to go on summer. I'm gonna have a baby. And then when I come back, most of these people, there's gonna be new people that don't know me. Some people might forget that I was even pregnant and just that was that, you know? So then I went on summer, I had my daughter during the summer, which was perfect for me because that meant that I wouldn't have to like, let's say I had her during the year, then I would have to obviously leave and not go to school for some time because I had her. But the good thing was that I had her, I had her during the summer. And then when I went back to school, it had been like a month and a few weeks since she was born. So it was perfect. I had my time to relax and everything and then I was back. So if you guys remember, um, I worked up until I was eight months pregnant which to me it was like i was saying it was perfect to have that month off and like a few weeks because i was so exhausted from just being pregnant in general to then you know having worked so much like as a waitress it was it was really hard on me but i knew that i wanted to save money so that i wouldn't just be pregnant and broke and then feel like I had to rely on my boyfriend. Although I already did have savings, I still felt like I needed more now because now I was gonna have a baby to look after. So that was the reason why I worked up until I was eight months pregnant. Um, and like I said in that video where I was talking about how I had to save my, or how I saved money, I mean, I was so sick of it, I was tired, but I knew what I wanted. So I kind of just sucked it up. And for a lot of things, it was kind of just suck it up and do what you gotta do because you fucked up. And that's what I would always tell myself because I was like, I never wanted people to feel bad for me. I didn't want my boyfriend to always take care of me. I didn't want it to be like that. So I kind of like set goals for myself. Um, so then my sophomore year, I did not work that entire year because I wanted to really focus on being a mom and being a student, which was so much more important to me than paying bills. But I feel like that was an easy choice for me because I had my boyfriend to support me. Although I did have my own savings, that was like another thing that didn't make me feel like I was broke. Like if my boyfriend left me, I'd be like, uh, what do I do now? Does that kind of make sense? Um, so I'm so fucking grateful for my boyfriend ha for having done that and stepping up as a father and being there for me and my daughter and, you know, letting me worry about school only and being a mom. Um, so I breastfed for a year and three months, which was very important to me because I remember going to my appointments and stuff. They would always ask me, like, are you still breastfeeding? And I'd be like, yeah. And they'd be like, they'd always tell me, I mean, oh, that's so good. Like, you're 19. I was 19 at the time. And, well, I was pregnant when I was 18 and my daughter was 19. I don't think I mentioned that. So then they'd be like, you know, we don't have a lot of young moms breastfeeding. Like, a lot of moms just think it's easiest to um give their babies formula but i felt like if i'm able to produce milk why not and so i was always producing milk because my daughter was always latching on to me and so that was perfect um like i said i only breast for, breastfed her for a year and three months so whenever i would go to school i would make sure i would have milk pumped and ready for her so that and then when I was at school, I did unfortunately did not get to pump, but I did learn something my senior year that I should have learned then. And it was that on campus, there are rooms for women to go and pump if they need it. So if you didn't know, you should check out every school if you are a student yourself or you're soon to be mom and see if there's like a room for you to go to, because I guess my school did offer that and I just didn't know and no one ever fucking decided to mention it to me. Even my counselor knew, my RA knew and no one ever fucking told me. But sorry guys, but I was like, I remember if your mom or you know, whatever, you're pregnant, when your boobs um, get full of milk, they start hurting. And I remember I actually had one breast that was so full of milk that I ended up going to the ER and I got a fever because I should have pumped milk, but it was just so full that I got sick from it, if that makes sense. There's a name for it, but I forgot what it's called. It's been so long. Um, so that had happened and my school did offer it. I just didn't know. So I would always have to like to get home and I would quick like start pumping. And whenever I was at school, I would wear like little leak pads because I would leak, but it was fine because like I said, I was wearing the little pads and it wouldn't show. So a lot, not a lot. I feel like I was able to do this because of my mom and my boyfriend. Um, aside from the fact that obviously, you know, the whole school stuff was me, but 
it took a lot of weight off me that my mom could watch my daughter or that my boyfriend could watch my daughter um, because whenever I was at school, I mean, obviously that first year I didn't work, but whenever I was at school, I would just drop her off with my mom in the morning or my boyfriend would keep her and then he'd drop her off if he had to go work. And I had someone to watch her that was a family member. It was only ever my mom or my boyfriend, a few times my sister. And I'm so grateful that I didn't have to get a babysitter or take her to a daycare because daycares are fucking expensive. At one point I did consider taking her to the daycare at my school so that I could take her while I was in class and then you know I would be there. But once I found out how much it was, I was like, excuse me, come again. It was 1,400 because my daughter was considered a newborn. It was gonna be 1,400 a month to take my daughter. And it wasn't even the entire day, it was just like a few hours. So, I was like, nope, I don't even know how that came to be a question in mind, but I was like, nope, no thank you, I'll pass. My mom's good, my boyfriend's good. Um, but, you know, unfortunately that's something, a reality that some women can't, you know, they don't have someone who can watch their kids. And I totally feel for you because I feel like that lifted so much weight off of me. And then not just that, but I I feel like I'm a Chiona. I'm a Chiona, Chiona like my mom. Like I can hear a sad ass story and I'll start crying just because I heard a sad story. Or I can see something sad happen in the news and I'm over here like, fuck. Because I'm always that type of person that I, I literally put myself in someone's shoes. And I always tell people like, put yourself in their fucking shoes, you know? So sometimes it could be a bad thing because then I'm over here crying over nothing. But nothing that had to do with me at least. But I've seen so many sad things happen to kids that they're, you know, assaulted or mistreated in daycares or with their babysitters in daycares that or just a babysitter in general that I feel like I'm scared to ever have to leave my daughter with someone who's a stranger and fortunately I've never had to do that and I'm so thankful for my mom and my boyfriend like I said for having been there for me and I mean they still are so that's a that has that was i mean i wasn't say that has been but i have graduated that was a big help and that is and i'll always say one of the reasons i was able to graduate because it took a lot of weight off of me now um i know some people are gonna be like oh my god your mom raised your daughter no my mom did not raise my daughter like i said that first year my mom would just watch my daughter while i was at school and then i would go home um and i'd be a mom and then junior year and senior year i was obviously working again junior year i was what was i working i was working at giant korean barbecue i think and then senior year partially i worked at giant korean barbecue and then i strictly went on to being a makeup artist which is what i still do now um so then my mom would just watch my daughter when i went to school or if i worked or just my boyfriend it was like vice versa with them another like good thing is that both myself and my boyfriend are self-contractors we both work for ourselves we don't work for anyone else in terms of working a nine to five job and having to be somewhere you know five days six days out of the week we basically make our own schedules and to me that's perfect because if I'm busy and my boyfriend's not, he can watch her or vice versa. Or if we're both busy, my mom will watch her for like a few hours and then someone picks her up. And so that's been a lot of help. Um, even now, like I said, it, it was, during school, it was perfect. And now it's the same thing. Um, and I know that not a lot of people have that, you know, ability to have, you know, both parents being self-contractors or having um, a grandparent watch their kid. And that's why I've always said, I feel like I can't complain. I'm not someone who should ever complain because I had it good, I had it real fucking good. And I will never, you know, take my mom for granted, take my boyfriend for granted or ever say that I did it myself because I didn't. I had so much help from them. And it took, like I said, it took so much weight off of me. Um, but don't forget, like I was still, I still did my job as a mom and I, to this day, still feel like I do my job as a mom. And I never want to be that at-home mom. I don't think that that's for me. I want to work and then also have, my, like, how to explain it? Me and my boyfriend share responsibilities with working and being parents. Like, it's not, I really don't like that whole nuclear thing where, you know, the, the dad goes to work, provides, and then the mom's just home being a mom. And then, or that the mom will, you know, go work and then come and do the housework and everything because that's two fucking jobs, bitch. No, I did not sign up for that. I 
and my boyfriend made a baby so we both got to split everything and we agree on that when he doesn't i'm like boom we need to talk because this is not working out so we have a really good understanding with one another and it works and it works for me and that was another thing that helped me um during school that we shared our responsibilities um and like i said in my sophomore year it was just strictly being a mom and being a student so that's pretty much how i was able to do it while i was in school um now something that i feel like it's very important to share is during those you know sophomore junior and senior year during those three years little things would like bother me when people would be like oh my god you know i'd run it run into people who hadn't seen in a while and they'd be like you still go here and i was like yeah like why wouldn't i go here and uh, or just in general like i felt like a lot of people expected me to fail and i'm telling you guys i'm fucking chewing up if there's anything that ever ever has angered me it's people expecting you to fail like why would i fail i told myself that i you know i, I know i fucked up but and my daughter wasn't planned but i i never wanted to let those people get that like i knew she was gonna fail out of me does that make sense and i feel like that was something that pushed me to continue aside from my um my daughter and my parents because if you guys don't know i'm gonna post that little poster here that i made and you guys can go check it out if you want but where i was basically explaining like why i went to school and why i did what i did or whatever and it was for my parents and for my daughter not so much for myself because i feel like i never knew what i was gonna do you, you, you know what i'm talking about like you go to college and you're like what, what the fuck am i gonna do after i graduate i never knew like i had an idea like i knew what i might want to do but i didn't know so i did it for them and i'm so glad that i found makeup because this is what i love like i get to choose my schedule i don't have to be somewhere from a shift every day and live a life where i'm not happy and i genuinely can say that i'm happy in this industry and it was just it was crazy to me to think that so many people expected me to fail um i remember like my, the funniest person to me was my counselor although she was always very supportive i felt like she was always supportive but she'd be like but it's okay if you need a break and i'd be like don't tell me that like i don't want a break i get that it's okay but i don't want it i don't want to tell myself that it's okay because i don't want to take that break like i want to continue because i was able to do so and if you are a mom or you're going to be a mom and you feel like you need a break and you you know you're you really feel like maybe it's going to do you bad or you might not pass classes if you go to school then yeah take your break but i knew i didn't need that break and for that reason i kept pushing um many times i was stressed i remember i because i myself am a procrastinator and that's all on me but sometimes my daughter wouldn't sleep at night and she would just cry 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 and then i would wake up during the night and try to put her to sleep and then you know you're tired you're irritated you're annoyed and i would just be like fuck and i have school at 8 a.m my whole four years i always took like morning classes every every now and then there was like a few quarters where i would go in a little later but most of the time i was like going in the mornings and i'd just be so stressed and so sick of it that i'd be like fuck like why don't i just stop like why 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 and then i remember like you know i already went through all of this i already spent whatever one two three years here why stop now why let that time in my life just be kind of like thrown away you know um so that was like another thing but yes many times i did want to quit because i was just stressed um and then when i started working it was like i had to work i went to school i was a mom i was trying to freelance i was trying to do this i was trying to do that it was just i felt like so many fucking things were always piling up on me i feel like my senior year was when i kind of felt it and many times i cried many times i cried because my senior year was when i took all my ap classes and i was i mean my <laughs> ap classes guys all my upper divisions i'm sorry i'm over here tripping um, it was when I took all my upper divs and it was it was that's when it got hard once you're only taking upper divisions and for a few quarters I think for two quarters I only took upper divisions and god help me like I felt it and I would cry in my living room and I'd tell my boyfriend like I just want to quit like I don't want to do it anymore I was 
overwhelmed with the work because once you're in upper divs like it's not it's not a joke anymore you got to do all of it and like i said i was a procrastinator for so for a lot of things i would procrastinate and then once i felt the freaking stress i'd just be like why the fuck did i do this to myself and then my daughter would be like mommy 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 and i'm trying to do this i'm trying to watch a video to help me and i'm just like fuck someone help me you know and I would look at my boyfriend and be like, take her, please, like, fucking take her. And he would be like, okay, like, he'd be like, babe, it's okay. And I'd be like, no, it's not fucking okay. Like, I'm so fucking tired of this. I don't want to go to school. And he would be like, no, like, don't be stupid, you know. And he, like, heard it from me many times when I would just, like, I would just go off. Just because I was stressed, guys. And then, like I said, I was... At this time now, I was like freelancing. This is by the time that I quit my job, my senior year, I was basically just a freelance makeup artist and teaching. And I had a lot of days where I had time, but then the days when I was hella booked and then I had to go to school and I taught and I'm over here being a mom, it's just, everything was like crowding. And those days were just hard. And those were the days where I felt it. But I'm glad that I like pushed through and there was a few times where i did all-nighters i don't know how the fuck i one day i actually went not one day but it was a span of three um one time i actually didn't sleep for three days because i think we were in midterms and because i had all upper divisions i was just so stressed studying that i didn't sleep and i remember my mom called me one day and i was on facetime and she was like oh why do you look so you know kind of like but she didn't say that she was like telling me why i look tired and i was like i haven't fucking slept like what do you need i wasn't trying to be rude but i was like i was just and then she was like oh you need to sleep like why are you doing that to yourself and i was like because i have midterms i have this i have that and then i felt bad because i felt like i was letting all my anger out on my mom and on my boyfriend or every now and then my daughter my daughter would like come into my room like don't fucking come in my room but i wasn't trying to be like a bad parent or anything it was just i was so stressed and i blame myself for it but at the same time I'm like proud, not proud of being evil. <laughs> I felt like I was evil to my daughter sometimes. I'd be like, get out, get out of here. But I'm proud that I was able to do it because I feel so accomplished. And I did a lot of this, like I said, for my daughter and my parents, but I feel like I did that shit, you know? And I think that's something that, it has made me very proud of who I am that's something that people can't take away from me. And, you know, like I said, there was times when I just felt like giving up and I'm glad that I didn't. I feel like it empowered me as a woman and not to come on here and be like, oh my God, I'm so fucking empowered and all bitch. I mean, like it did make me feel like, fuck, I did that shit. Like fuck everyone else, you know? Not a lot of people can say that they graduated or whatever, you know? And my biggest, like, standpoint that has made me, like, I fucking did that shit was... I remember my freshman year of college when we were doing the orientation. They said, a lot of you are not going to graduate in four years. I remember this clear as fucking, like, if it was today. We were sitting, like, on the grass and the, the person, I don't remember who they were, but they were, like one in three students doesn't graduate in four years so they were like look at the two people next to you one of two of you guys are not gonna graduate one of you is and i remember like looking and i was like fuck like really and so i had made it a goal of mine to graduate in four and i'm so fucking like i'm stoked that i did graduate in four and it's not to bash anyone who doesn't graduate in four but you know being told that you know one in three of us wouldn't and then my dumbass over here went and got pregnant i was like i'm gonna be that one person it was my senior year that i was like in the my first quarter of senior year that i was like i might not graduate like i was okay kind of scared i had never like fucked up fucked up but i did feel like two classes and i was okay like <laughs> what am i gonna do you know scratching my fucking head but luckily i i was able to make them up and that was that but yes i was like i'm sorry if i'm moving the camera guys it was, I'm not over here trying to fucking get comfortable. There was like a time when I was like low-key kind of scared, but I did it. And also, like I said, it's not to bash anyone. If you take longer, you take less time, whatever, that's okay. But I made it a goal of mine. Like, 
I told myself I wanted to graduate in four to prove all those people wrong. And not just that, but say, hey, and I was fucking pregnant. And, you know, I'm a mom. Like, I I did my fucking part, you know. Um, I was never broke, fortunately. I never struggled like that. And, and I was very happy, and I still am. And another thing is, at my school, they had a thing called finish in four. So that was like another thing. Anywhere you walked or if you went to UC Riverside, if you go to UC Riverside, if you go to the financial aid office, you go to your counselors, all around campus, you'll see signs that say finish in four. So that was another thing. And I was like, all the time I said it, but I, find, I kind of found it helpful because then I'd be like, bitch, you need to finish in four. And like I said, it's not to bash anyone, but it's just like, it was literally like plastered all over school that I really felt like I needed to finish in four and I didn't want to make any excuses as to why I wouldn't finish in four. Does that make sense? So to me, it was such a big fucking accomplishment that I did it. And I had two graduations. I had one that was for Hispanic students only and it was, um, it's called Raza Grad. And then I had my real graduation and I cried at both. And I was just like, fuck, like listening to other people's stories, you know, when they went up for Rasa Grad and they were like saying like little things about like thinking to my family or like their speeches. I was like crying up. I was sitting there with my friends crying. I'll probably put a video in here <laughs> of us. And I was just like, it, it's amazing. Like all the shit that me and my friends went through. And I'm just like, I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm so happy I did it. And then another thing is I don't plan on pursuing a career in sociology, which is what I got my bachelor's degree in. But like I said, I did that for my parents because my parents came to the US with a dream. And unfortunately, due to our fucked up society, I feel like my parents weren't able to live you know, their dream. And there are so many people who go, to, who go through hard times. My parents were, you know, some people who went through hard times that unfortunately they were unable to live their dream and so it was my dream it was my dream to make my parents their dream i never wanted my parents to see me as a failure I never wanted my parents to see me as a failure. I didn't want them to think that I went to school and I got fucking pregnant and I didn't finish. So it was, you know, I was proud to make them proud. I know I made them proud. Like, I remember their faces when I graduated when I walked up on the stage both times. They were, I could see the happiness in their eyes. And my parents know I'm not doing anything with my degree, my degree, but they know I'm doing so much better than what I'm already doing. And like I feel like I don't have to tell them. I feel like they know. And I'm, I feel like they're happy for me and I'm happy for me. And that was all I wanted. Does that make sense? I'm the youngest of eight and I feel like I've always felt so fucking pressured to do good. I feel like they never wanted me to fuck up. And a lot of times that I did fuck up, I was like, well, fuck. I'm not the perfect kid, you know? I never wanted to be the perfect kid, but I always did feel so fucking pressured to do good, you know? Not that my siblings are a mess, cause they're not a mess. We all go through fucking shit, but still I always felt so pressured cause I was the youngest. And I feel like I've come a long way and I'm I'm glad that, you know, I thank God that I've been successful. I feel like I am someone who is successful and I, I hope to grow so much more and I hope to grow so much more in this industry because this is where my heart is and I'm very happy doing what I do and I would like to grow here. And I know my parents see that and I'm just happy that I can, you know, live my dream but they know they did something right does that make sense because to me i've always wanted my parents to know that 
their efforts in coming here to the U.S. were never for nothing. It was never like we came here and my kids did nothing. Does that make sense? Um, I'm happy to have been able to do something that made them proud. And although I don't, how do I, how do I say it? Although I'm not going to be doing anything with my degree, it meant so much to me to let them know that they did something right with me that I was able to do that. Does that make sense? Because to me, what I did throughout elementary, middle school, high school, and college was all things to them. Does that make sense? That was for them. It was always for them. And I want my parents to know that they did they did what they did everything that they could with me right does that make sense so that's why i mean i'm happy and i know that they know that they did something right if that makes sense i'm like so confused in my own head right now um but it's just my biggest advice to you guys is is when people don't believe in you believe in yourself you are seriously your biggest supporter. There will be people who do support you. I've had people who do support me, but then there's gonna be the people who don't, or who will say little negative comments, who make their remarks, who have bad things to say, but always remember your goals and they're not living your life. You're living your life and do that. Live your fucking best life, despite what anyone has to say about it. As long as you're happy, you're paying your bills, if you're a parent you're being a parent and you know you're you're happy that's all that fucking matters and so in that post that i had actually told you guys about like i was basically i feel like i didn't i don't owe anyone an explanation but i was like you know what let me just fucking answer it for the one fucking time because I'm, i know i'm not the only person who goes who's going through it or who's gone through it no i don't plan on doing anything with my degree but I'm glad to have gotten an education because I do think and I've always thought education is important. And just alone having a bachelor's degree, you can make so much more money than someone who doesn't have a bachelor's degree just because you have a bachelor's degree. Degree, I fucking said degree. Regardless of what's in, what it's in, you'll get a higher pay just for having a degree. And you know, at least I have that on my background. And I feel like you know, being educated is important and at least I have all that. And I feel like something that I've always disliked in this industry is that a lot of people assume that makeup artists are just makeup artists and they know nothing else. And I feel like, I'm like, bitch, no, I'm educated. I'm a makeup artist. I'm a micro influencer. I'm Latina and I'm a fucking mom. And, you know, there's this brand, it's called Milf University. They have this thing that says, um, what is it? It's, um, I feel like I just had a brain fart. Unapologetic. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I fucking had a brain fart that big. It's um, about being un like moms are un unapologetic or I'm unapologetic. I can't remember exactly how the phrase is right now. I'll put it right here once I fucking can remember when I see it. Um, but it's just something I really can relate to and I'm, I'm very proud of who I am. And I'm not the fucking shit. I'm not the greatest person. There are so many other women who go through so much, who go through real, who go through real life struggles because I feel like I had it good. But even the little accomplishments I had, I feel like I'm fucking proud of them. And I'll never let anyone put me down for the shit that I've gone through because I have gone through shit. Although I may not have struggled like other people have, I had my own struggles. And that's basically gonna sum up this video, guys, because I think I kind of went through it. Like I said, a lot of my success has come through the help i've received and like i said my mom has been much of that help my boyfriend has done his part and i'm so fucking grateful that you know he's never left me or my daughter and he's always been there as a man and he stepped up to his plate and i'm i'm nothing without them when it comes to some of the things i've accomplished does that make sense because i've done a lot of things myself yes i have but they made my life easier and i'm forever grateful for them i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i cried like always i'm sorry i got that from my mom my mom is such a chona too but i'm sorry guys um 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to cover anything I needed to, but there wasn't very much for me else to say. I think I kind of said it all. Um, but with that being said, if you guys have not followed me on my Instagram, my Instagram is MUA Erica18. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, you know, turn on the little post notifications. And I hope to see you guys in another video. Sorry for making it this long, but I don't even know how long it is. I don't want to check because I'm looking kind of scared. But I hope I, you know, answered anything that I needed to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.